is Martin Baum, who is the, uh, the head of uh, Pantenius Power and Sale Insurance. In Sydney, Martin's making us a quick visit, which he does uh, every year, which is usually the last, what, six months or so, is it? Well, this time it's six months, yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad you just make a fleeting visit uh, to our lovely area. Yeah. And uh, today we're at the uh, Middle Harbour 16-foot Skiff Club, and we're going to be talking about insurance for, uh, for the boating industry. Martin, you're one of the leaders. Um, and you've had a pretty busy year this year, this past year gone, haven't you, with what's been happening around the world with insurance? So uh, what's yeah. the state of play? Well, I mean, we are very happy that in January this year was the Dusseldorf Boat Show. We had uh, signed our 100,000 client, and so this was a milestone for Pantaneous. Um, and, uh, and, and something uh, that, that really is a good note, whereas last year, obviously, with the hurricanes in the Caribbean, the whole insurance industry has been very heavily hit, and that was a, a difficult year. Um, but um, yeah, so the Dusseldorf Boat Show was, was great in that respect, that there was some, some positive developments, lots of new models, new boats, new, um, new, new enthusiasm and motivation for a good season, hopefully. So Martin, um, if I were to buy a boat tomorrow and want to go a little bit of cruising and a little bit of racing, you know, just a general usage boat, yeah. what should I do as far as insurance is concerned? Well, I, I think there's a, a few cornerstones that you need to take into consideration when it comes to insurance. So first of all, are you using your boat privately or are you using it also for commercial reasons in terms of skipper charter or bareboat charter? Uh, I think that's very important that if you do rent out your boat, then obviously a whole lot of different rules applies. But let's assume you're just a private owner, which yeah. most of our clients are. Then you obviously have to look at the hull insurance as one insurance that protects your assets and looks at the boat itself. Um, and when it comes to that, you obviously want to make sure that the money you invested in the boat is also secured. So make sure your insurance is a rated insurers behind so that in case of financial disturbances and, and crises that at least you can guarantee your money back. But more importantly, also make sure that the value that you choose of, of the insurance value is reflective of the value that your boat is really worth. And then once you have determined this value, it's very important that this value is an agreed fixed value, which means that once that value has determined it's untouchable afterwards and no market value uh, is, is created that might be, might be then deducted from, from the payout in case of a total loss. Um, this agreed fixed value is really one cornerstone of Pantaneous um, and differentiates us from many other insurers who normally insure via a market value policy but we don't believe in that system because it's not giving you the security of really knowing what your boat is worth in, in, in a total um, uh, claim uh, situation. So agreed fixed value is one key corner of the Pantaneous Yacht Insurance and something that, that you need to have in my point of view. The second one is that you need to look at new for old um, clause which is basically if you have a damage on a 10 year old boat and your mast comes down then you would like to have a replacement as a new mast and not necessarily too many deductions for age um, um, and so those two cornerstones are important. Um, generally I think uh, the hull insurance is, is important to secure your asset and make sure that you don't lose any money in, in a disaster scenario. The other uh, side of the coin is of course the third party liability insurance. Mm -hmm. This is something that is um, from a financial uh, risk the even more important insurance. Um, and the third party liability insurance take care similar to the car insurance of damages that you cause to other parties. Um, in Australia, for example, it's 10 million compulsory, some insured for personal and property damages. Um, and so that's, that's something that, that really needs to uh, be bought. It's, it's much cheaper as well than the Hull insurance because it's a, it's a, it's a standard insurance. Um, there's small little differences as well on that insurance. For example, um, the normal insurances, third-party liability, 
not necessarily automatically also cover all the people that are on the boat and their liability. So for example, if your, 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 your friends that are on the boat causing a damage to a third party, then sometimes the uh, third party liability insurance only covers the owner of the boat mm -hmm. rather than the liabilities from the crew and the guests on board. Um, but generally that's, that's something that must be included and it, it, it is in most cases um, part of it. So to summarize this up again, there's the hull insurance, make sure you have an agreed fixed value and then there's the third party liability insurance. Those two are a minimum requirements that I would recommend everyone to have. There's few other insurances that you can add, then the bigger the boat you can add um, uh, additional accident insurance, medical insurance for crew members that are employed. Um, also there's uh, war strike and confiscation cover if your boat is in a remote area where um, it's more likely to get uh, confiscated because the paperwork is not in order or so and damages that are caused due to that. Uh, can be covered as well. But those are then additional things I would say you call your insurance specialist and, and discuss those in details. So what about, uh, what about cruising? You, know, you want to go cruising, you want to go from country to country. Um, do you cover you know, like worldwide or do you do it by areas? Or? Well, this is, this is an important point. I think Pantanius always has stand uh, to be the number one address for blue water sailors and this is um, basically the heart of our philosophy that we are there for our yacht clients worldwide. We have 12 offices all over Europe, America and Australia and so we are proud to say that when you have a problem we, we will be close by somewhere and have an extensive network of uh, surveyors and claims adjusters that help us to sort out when you're in need. Um, and so you can go worldwide for sure but on a technical point of view it's not normal that you would buy a worldwide cruising area straight away. What you normally do is you discuss with us your route. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we also give advice and restrictions in terms of piracy risks um, but also in terms of named tropical storms we would like to advise you to go at certain times to certain areas rather than really be in the Caribbean for the hurricane season and if you are there yes we can insure you but you need to uh, take certain precautions um, so generally speaking it's much cheaper to discuss your route with us and we tailor make the the route rather than going and say just give me worldwide cruising area and, and that's it. I mean, we can do that, but it will cost you more money at the end oh, of, of course, the day. Yeah, indeed. So uh, talking about the Caribbean and last year with the, uh, the hurricane season, it must be a fairly costly season all round, would it? Well, it, it was a costly season for the insurance market in general and especially also for the reinsurance market because not only the yachts have been hit but also the, the whole infrastructure, uh, houses, businesses, uh, cars, everything destroyed. So this kind of reinsurance cost will trickle through to the to the client eventually. So um, even though for us um, it it was um, not the worst hurricane year in terms of the total amount of cl uh, claim value, it was the worst year in in in, in terms of number of claims. Um, and the big problem when you have hurricane claims is to actually bring in the infrastructure to sort out the mess and salvage the boats um, and find repair facilities. We have now, for example, the waiting time for one year just to get new masts because the mast manufacturer have um, already produced as much as they could and have uh, put additional hours in but they still cannot produce fast enough mast for a 40 or 50 foot sailing yacht so the waiting times are quite high so most of our claims have been uh, settled um, but of course there are some claims that, that, that are still pending because of the problems that you either can't get to the boats because of certain marinas that, that uh, determine who can come into the marina and not so you, you don't have a free and fair playing field in many cases because then the, 
the repair uh, companies that are local, they would like to keep all the business for themselves and so you cannot just bring in outside workers and there's a lot of problems in the detail of claims management Politics, that, is that everyone has to understand and that's why as well it's so important for us to advise people on their route and on being in hurricane exposed or named tropical exposed areas because we like to deliver on our promises to be a concierge service claims management company so if you have a problem we want to be there in some of the cases especially now in the Caribbean you cannot repair boats so we'd rather not our clients to go there full stop in, at the moment until uh, the infrastructure has come back to a level where we can say, okay, now you, we can honestly say you can go back because in case of an accident, we will be able to help you. Mm. Well, you see all the, uh, the, vid the footage is coming out of the Caribbean at the moment with hulls just lying by the, the side of the water, just sunk with mass sticking out of the water and it's just horrendous, isn't it? Yes, I mean, we have had our surveyors um, coming in by a catamaran. They moved into, into the islands um, as, as one of the first surveyors on the ground. Um, and there was, there was nothing. There was no electricity, there was no infrastructure, no cranes. Um, and so when they came in, they, they first identified each boat and, and tried to make some sense into the chaos. At the same time, they were very much um, uh, concerned about the well-being of the local people. It's quite a tough job to come in and, and, and taking care of the toys of the so-called millionaires when the people in the streets have no water, no food, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So it, that was a tough time, um, but our, our surveyors have done a great job and in between even they had to leave because the next hurricane came. So it was a real difficult year last year, but I think we are on a, on a very good way now to, to, um, to come to the next season. I mean, one of the big uh, shining lights was the St. Bass Bucket, which was on uh, the Super Yacht event. Mm. So th they're coming back um, uh, on their feet and thank God these events are coming back uh, and can help the local um, community because they depend on, on the support, obviously. And what about the Australian market? We've just had a couple of big storms here too, haven't we? Actually, we've got one at the moment. We, we have one at the moment, thank God, it's quite off the coast still. So, um, yeah, I think the Australian market is, is um, it's a very good market. We have uh, had a tremendous success here so far. Our, uh, our product is well received. It's different than, than what you find here on the local market. So we, we're quite happy with our positioning here with the agreed fixed value and the new for old um, uh, parts of our product um, and yes there are storms but uh, so far um, I think when you when you look at how we deal with these scenarios in terms of giving people advice where to put their boats before they go into into these areas and how to behave when the storm comes then I think that's a big difference because we have a named tropical storm clause which tells you you can be in a certain marina, you can be uh, in the mangroves, you can be inside with moorings but not on the uh, estray, you have to be more inside inland. If you take all this knowledge into account then we believe that our portfolio is, is quite secure against those storms. Um, and, and, and it's much better way to deal with this risk rather than just put a deductible on and say, okay, leave your boat wherever you want, but if, if the storm comes, you, you, you have a high deductible. That's not how we, how we deal with these things. We want to be actively involved to actually avoid claims in the first place rather than paying out less than when, it's, when it happened. On the other side too is that you uh, you spend a lot of money also in the uh, the sport itself, don't you, by sponsoring events and yes. in the power and the sale area. You, yes. You, you, uh... Well, I mean, we we love. I mean, I, we're a family company, and my my brother and my father and my sister and me, we always went racing. Um, so we love sailing. Um, we did the transatlantic race. Daimler Chrysler uh, Transatlantic race, we did the Fastnet race, we did all the big long-term regattas. I haven't done the Sydney Hobart yet, it's all still on my list, but um, we like to support um, uh, uh, cruiser racer scenarios 
and uh, so we did the Newport Coffs Harbour Regatta uh -huh. for the first time in uh, 2017. Um, and I think that's that's a great format to, to attract not only the pure racers but also the cruisers. Um, and we also into the um, sport fishing association, which are which is uh, which is quite an important role in maintaining the uh, statistical data of the fish stocks and so on. It's, so we, we like to get involved with with the yachting world rather than just putting nice. Uh, fancy pictures in the magazines. But also, too, uh, you do some uh, some pretty big events in Europe, too, don't you? In Germany, you know, uh, during Kiel, Kiel Week, you do a big yeah. race. Yeah, we do. We do. We do events during Kiel Week. We always have normally a rip around um, where we can have uh, race support. Um, we like to, uh, uh, you know, be be involved, as I said. And so, one of the big. Uh, events for us is always the um, long distance regatta, the Pantanos um, round score race, which is from Helgoland to Kiel, runs around Denmark, um, and uh, and many other regattas uh, on on also smaller scales where we support local clubs with their youth team, with the optimists, or with the four uh, twenty seasons. Um, this is this is our our way of of. Of giving back to the community as well, the sailing community. So, um, whereabouts? Did you, just to go back over once more, uh, whereabouts do you have all your offices in uh, in Europe? And uh... yeah, basically um, all over Europe, in in, in pa Palma de Mallorca, and then in Monaco, in in France. Um, we have as well in England, Denmark. Austria, believe it or not, <laughs> for the lakes, um, and uh, and also of course Denmark, Sweden, Germany, Poland. Now is our latest office. Um, the Polish market is 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 coming up, and there's a lot of good young strong sailors. Um, and then obviously um, in America on um, on the west coast, uh, Los Angeles, San Diego, and then on the east coast in uh, New York and uh, Newport, Newport yeah. and of course here in Sydney, Australia. Well, fantastic. Well, yeah, it's good talking to you um, and anybody can, uh, with, a, with a boat can insure their boat with you, can they? Or? Everyone, except for ferro cement boats, we don't insure them, unfortunately. Well, there you go. That's Martin Baum, who is uh, one of the owners of uh, Pantaneous Power and Sail Insurance. Having a lovely time here in Sydney, just enjoying his, uh, his summer while it's uh, snowing like you wouldn't believe in winter at the moment. I can see why you're here, Martin. That's right, yes. <laughs> it's all business. <laughs> Have a good stay. Thank you.